I don't know if anyone, anyone has, has done this before. I'm, I'm assuming so, someone might have, but with the bushwalks, what I thought might be nice is I would give you the pre-trail briefing or pre-walk briefing that we usually do with our guests. So when I've got guests, if we do head out on, on a bushwalk, I'll give you the proper safari guide pre-trail briefing or pre-walk briefing, just so you can have an idea of how we would do it if we had guests with us. I know there are always questions about walking in the bush and what do you do and how do you react, etc. So remember, walking in the bush is not unsafe at all. You just have to be careful and you have to be very, very aware. So if we had a group of guests, and we usually don't do a bush walk with more than eight guests, and then with that you would have the guide, um, so say for example myself, and then a, a tracker or a backup guide. Now usually both of you, if you were doing a proper walk, both of you would have a rifle. So this shall be my rifle. Um, and then the backup also has a rifle. Uh, with leading the walk, I would lead the walk and the backup would either walk just behind me or I'd ask them to walk at the back of the group and we'd all walk together. So what I would say is, right everybody, welcome on the bush walk. Uh, what we're going to be doing on a bush walk is basically trying to get an opportunity to have a look at some of the smaller stuff that we see on foot and listen to the bush a little bit better. We might see things that we miss out on from a vehicle because we probably driving a little bit too quick to see the smaller insects and so on. The idea of a bushwalk is not necessarily to view game on foot because they do react differently to us and generally move away. But that's not to say that we're not going to see any wildlife. As some of you know, we do often bump into animals. In saying that, there are a few little guidelines that I'd like to give, give all the guests. So firstly, what we're going to be doing is probably walking in single file. And the reason for that is just because it's easier to follow one another and you can stick on my path to make sure we don't step on anything while we're walking. So we'll stay in single file, generally about an arm's length apart, so that we are fairly close together. And if I call you, um, into a group and you don't have that far to walk or that far to go. Now during a walk we're also going to keep our voices down because if we talk too much and we make too much noise we may alert some of the animals and chase them off and also we need to listen out if we can't hear any of the animals. While we're walking, if you spot something, if you'd like to get my attention, just use a natural clicking sound um, either with your tongue or just snap your fingers that will get my attention and I'll turn to you if you've spotted something or if you'd like to ask me anything um, then uh, what else um, just make sure that you stay behind me and the rifle at all times it's one of the golden rules stay behind me and the rifle at all times while we walk, if we do come across any animals, I may use hand signals and not my voice to tell you what to do. So come forward, get back, go down. One of the most important ones is just, just that. It's just a freeze sign. It just means stop in your tracks, look at me, and I'll tell you exactly what to do. And the whole time, please remember to my, uh, please remember to listen to my instructions. I may ask the backup to guide you to a position. Just follow him if we do come across any of the animals. The most important rule, though, is whatever you do, don't run. If we bump into anything, stop, stand still, listen to me, and I'll tell you exactly what to do. And that's it. And then off we go on a walk. And, uh, and then hopefully we'll find some animals and look at some of the smaller things. So that's a general pre-walk briefing. Usually we do a, we do a little bit before. 